to start off choosing a good starting point. There's a number of factors that you want to consider when choosing a good starting point. The most obvious one is metal. How many metal spots are right accessible? Because the longer you walk, the, the, the more time your opponent has to get ahead of you. So here, this is the obvious starting point. Uh, but real quick, there's a few other things you want to consider when choosing a starting point. Right now, since we're in beta, you want to consider uh, bugs. Because, where's an example? Here we go. See, this metal spot, you can't build on. So there's not much point in choosing this and counting on that metal spot. So that won't be much of an issue down the line, but something to consider for now. Another thing you want to consider is expansion. If you start off with, say, five, ten metal spots right at the start, but there's nothing nearby, you're not going to have a good time. But all in all, this is a good, metal, a good starting spot. There's plenty of metal to expand to and plenty to start off with. Okay, so we choose and go. Very first thing we want to do is get a strong economy going to fund our army. So I'm going with the fairly standard build of three metal, then energy, then metal. You don't want to do the energy um, before the third one because watch here we're able to finish about yeah okay maybe maybe you want to consider doing a energy plant as the third building that's actually something a good good thing worth worth trying out okay so then we've got our bot factory most everyone prefers bot factories because the bot fabricators are a little less buggy with the pathfinding they have the same speed and build rate as vehicle fabricators, but they're able to just turn a lot easier than the vehicles. So we've got the bot factory, then you want to queue up energy with the commander. It's always it's an, often a good idea to get energy storage up. Uh, and then queue up a bunch more energy. Now, keep in mind, this is beta. So these opening build stuff, very flexible and likely to change um, as game is balanced. Although this particular build order has been around since early alpha. Oops, here we go. Come on. Come on. Now we want to get out some fabricators. Personally, I prefer to get out five fabrication bots, five doxes, and then a crap ton of fabrication bots. If you start off with nothing but just solid fabrication bots, then you end up with too much production power and not enough economy. So it's a good idea to take a break from fabrication bots, otherwise you'll either have idle fabrication bots or more um, construction going on than your economy can support. With my first fabricator, I like to get him supporting my commander. Uh, that uh, allows me to get the energy going faster. I've found that sending the first fabrication bot to go after metal tends to send your economy into a deficit with energy. So if you send them first to assist the commander, you tend to not have energy issues. Um, okay, what I prefer to do is I like... Oh, great. We're getting some glitches with the strategic icons. This is going to suck. <sighs> okay. Um, Still no questions. Seriously, guys, feel free to ask lots of questions. It'll make my job easier of finding stuff to talk about easier. <laughs> okay, so then with my fifth fabricator, I like to get out uh, air factory. 
start out with the Scout, and then crank out hummingbirds. Lots and lots of hummingbirds. Um, hummingbirds are always a great thing to have. Here we go, we got the first docks. Um, if your opponent scouts you, then you get to take them out. Uh, then you can take out the scouts. If your opponent likes to go with bombers, then hummingbirds are the natural counter. Uh, they're just all around a good thing to have. Okay. Um, what I like to do with my doxes is I like to send them out on early raids. Um, things like these metal ex extractors right here. These are perfect targets for your doxes. It will keep your opponent on their toes and reacting to what you do rather than um, causing you to be on the defensive. Um, by having him react to what's going on, this allows him less time to focus on his economy and more time focusing on combat, which gives you a better start early on. Okay, we got that queuing up. Here we go. Okay, so scouting. Scouting is very important both at the start and late game. What I like to do is I like to send my scout out in a spiral fashion. Um, around the base because if your opponent is right next to you particularly on large free-for-alls then it is important that you know so you can start getting up defenses and raids and then from there just move on to the um, uh, dense metal spots he's likely not going to spawn in the middle of nowhere with no metal spots and if he does, then, well, good, better off for you. So just queue up a nice long scouting pattern, hitting up all the metal spots. And then what I like to do is after I get the scouting pattern done, then I send him back to my base. Okay, so now we've got more fabric idle fabricators. We want to continue expanding the economy. I like to send out my fabricators in groups of two, three, or four, particularly at the beginning. And then I like to get up defenses and radar at my outlying metal spots. This keeps me from, or keeps my outlying metal spots from easily being raided. Okay, let's see, where's, here we go, we scouted him, now where's my scout? Still no questions, okay, scout around the enemy's base, figure out where he's expanding to, since this is a uh, AI, it's not going to really be that big of a deal, although, yeah, there goes my scout. Okay, so now we know where my opponent is, so now let's get some raiding in. Oh, got a positive economy. Let's use it. Um, got a decently strong economy, and my opponent is not being aggressive because he's the AI, and because I've been scouting, I know that. Oh man, this no strategic icons is a big problem. Okay, having radar up around the base is a fantastic thing to have. Gives you early warning and once you kick it up to 
advanced, uh, particularly with levelers, shellers, and stompers, or even pelters, then uh, having radar coverage greatly increases the effectiveness of your units. <clears throat> okay. Keep expanding, always, always expand. Always, always expand. You always want to keep your economy and production value growing. That's the surefire way to beat your opponent. If you're able to outproduce your opponent, you will beat him. Okay, uh, another technique that I like to use from time to time is whenever I build a radar, I build a energy plant. Since radar uses up energy, you don't want to create an energy deficit because you built too many radars. Um, and it's also all the more important now with the latest patches when you use up, uh, when you have a energy deficit, your radar stops working, which is never a good thing. Okay. I forgot about these guys. Okay. Oop, a little bit of combat go. Always want to keep an eye out for that buzzing noise or ear out, whatever. Eh. Oh, hello. That's what's going on. Wow. The bot has really learned. Shoot. Where's my units? Where's my units? Shoot. <laughs> um, focusing on things to talk about as well as playing is a bit of a challenge. Oh shoot, my bots are getting stuck in there. Okay, um, anti-air turrets. Um, shoot at both air and ground, but tend to not do much damage against uh, ground units, so don't rely on them exclusively. Um, since this is the AI, he is going to tend to focus on attacking the same areas. So we can use that to our advantage. Okay, let's raid a little bit. Scouting until we know he's on his way. Ah, da, 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 da. See what I'm talking about with the energy deficit. Man. Really? Okay. And this is what I'm talking about with keeping your opponent on their toes. Okay, another thing I like to do is I like to scatter out my energy. So if you get nuked, you don't lose all of your energy. Where's my... Uh... 
still no questions. Okay, let's... Go on the offense. Cause some damage. Got a decent bot force now. Since my opponent is raiding, setting up defensive towers is a good idea. And I've got lots of idle production uh, fabricators. Keep those building. Okay. Okay. Uh, da -da -dum, da -da -dum. Okay, another thing that I like to do is get forward vehicle factories. Vehicles travel slower than bots, so if you get a group of vehicle factories pumping out ants right near your opponent's base, then uh, you can cause a lot of damage that way. Um, since there's less travel time and vehicles do more damage than bots. Okay, you look up, I got a lot of positive economy. That's because I haven't been building factories. Been a little bit preoccupied with the teaching. Okay, let's send them over this way. Another good technique is to build proxy bases. What the? What the crap? Big time pathing issue. Okay, uh, so proxy bases. Proxy bases are essentially a brand new base uh, with your anything and everything um, in a different area. Uh, it's a great idea to build lots of um, factories on di in different areas. This allows you to stage attacks from uh, surprise angles, catching your opponent off guard. Um, ah. <sighs> Um, and it also allows you to recover from attacks should a large portion of your base be destroyed. It's a lot easier to uh, recover from any losses if you have a proxy base with production value um, or economy. Just pop in here, do some damage. I mean, it's the AI. They're not that difficult. We're just using them for education purposes. Um, when attacking your opponent, it's a good idea to damage their economy particularly early on. If you're about equal, damaging their economy is much more harmful than uh, damaging their production value. It's a lot more difficult to recover from an, uh, a loss to your economy than it is to a loss with your factories, because if you still have an economy and you gain, uh, and you, uh, you can always rebuild your factories. But if you lose all of your metal or energy, then it's a, it's a lot more difficult to rebuild everything, particularly when you're under attack and you gotta, you gotta
Sheesh, in all honesty, I haven't been playing that great. It's surprisingly difficult to, uh, Uh, surprisingly difficult to cast and teach at the same time. <sighs> right. If I was playing against a real player, I probably would have lost. Okay. Mm what else to go over? Um, I don't know. Okay, here we go. Looping Patrol. Looping Patrol, how do you set this up? Okay, Looping Patrol is very easy. Um, I've actually done it a little bit here. Um, see these fighters that are flying around in circles over here? That is a patrol. Um, so what you do is you select a group of units, you go over to this icon right here, patrol, you click, and then you hold down shift and just go click, 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 click. And now they will fly around in that pattern. It is a very good idea to have fighters patrolling around your base this will intercept incoming fighters, scouts, bombers, anything in the air. All around, good thing to have. Um, also, this uh, the it also provides good scouting intel. So if we were to get attacked, then the patrols would see them sooner. And if you're paying attention then this that'll provide some uh, life-saving intel. Um, ooh, orbital. That's a nice thing to go over. Okay, so orbital is very useful. I'm on a single system, a single planet system for this. So only going to be so much I can go over. I'll get those producing. Um, okay, so vehicles and bots. Bots are light, um, don't have a lot of health, but are very fast units. Great for raiding. Uh, vehicles can't keep up with them, so if your opponent only builds vehicles, then you can get a, a conglomerate of bots, send those in, and uh, your opponent's vehicles can't keep up. So you can just run around and it doesn't matter what your opponent does they can't chase you down, so as long as you avoid your opponent, then... Okay, we've got an incoming attack. See my, those little blips coming up on the radar? Oh, another helpful thing, waypoints. So, if rather than having all the units just sit right outside the factory when they come out, you can click on a factory, and then uh, right-click over here, wherever you want, and then all, all units will automatically walk to that location. Um, okay, so here we go. I got my catapult set up with radar coverage right outside my opponent's base. Um, having radar coverage of your opponent uh, can provide excellent intel. I've seen people win because of that, just because it provides an overview of where your opponent's buildings are um, and where their units are, so you can raid buildings and avoid the 
uh, units. The downside to catapults is they have a slow rate of fire, but they have high damage um, per shot, and they drain your economy. Uh, the catapult has to use energy to recharge the shots. Uh, what else? Levelers. Okay, so there are um, some units like the Leveler, the Sheller, the Stomper, the Blue Bottle. Oh, whoops. My Catapult just won the game for me. Um, well, I can... Didn't get a chance to go over it. Well, Defenses. Catapult. Preferred method. Okay, so defenses. Um, inaccurate. Okay, so... So, Catapult fires a homing missile that has 100% accuracy, but like I said, it uh, drains your economy and has a slow rate of fire. So, if you, ha if you were to defend with a row of catapults, I could destroy them rather easily with a group of bots. Now, another thing about catapults is they don't shoot at air units, so they I could easily destroy them with bombers. Um, honestly, the best form of defense is mixed. You want to have laser defense towers, um, anti-air turrets and long-range defenses, with long-range defenses being the Lobber, Pelzer, and Catapult. Um, there are upsides and downsides to each of them. The laser defense towers, uh, both basic and advanced, do a lot of damage, and they both have a range of 120, while ants have a range of 100, and doxes have a range of 80. So the laser defense towers outrange basic units, causing them to just cause massive amounts of damage to the enemy army uh, before they even get in range. Um, pelters have a longer range. If I remember correctly, I want to say it's 250. Um, a slow rate of fire, high damage, and area of effect. However, they're very inaccurate. Uh, laser defense towers are more accurate than pelters, and pelters have less damage, but they have greater range. A common technique is to pelter creep. You get radar coverage up, so and then you just creep pelters forward, and you damage your opponent's base without um, without coming under fire. Uh, again, the downside to these long range or, uh, pieces is they can't shoot at air, so you need to. Um, add in fighter coverage above or missile defense systems uh, uh, and all honestly fighters right now are the best form of anti-air you just get a group of fighters and you have them circling around above your opponent or uh, around above your whatever that you're trying to defend be it your entire base or small sections of your base fighters are excellent at intercepting incoming aircraft and bombers uh, a lot better than uh, missile defense towers, but missile defense towers still are helpful. Um, walls. Right now, walls are not properly balanced. Most players either don't use them or abide by gentleman's rules, which is putting only one wall in front of each defensive structure. Um, it is a fantastic idea to use walls. They are incredibly helpful. You'll annoy some of your opponents, though. Um, but, I mean, on, in all honesty, beating your opponent annoys them, so screw that. Um, putting a wall in front of your defensive structure greatly increases their effectiveness, naturally, because the units have to shoot at the walls before they shoot at the tower, so that gives the tower more time to shoot. And putting one wall in front of a defensive tower is better than building multiple defensive towers, since uh, it costs less metal to put up one defensive tower and one wall. Um, naturally, three defensive towers and three walls is better than 
uh, one. Uh, so best method, um, a mix. You, you, you can't rely on one structure. You have to mix it up and use yet several different combos of the structures. Um, let's get a real game going. Get a smaller planet for a faster paced game. So yeah, um, uh, th yes, they are inaccurate. You want to bear that in mind. When you're attacking them, you can use that to your advantage. If you send bots in a strafing to the side, um, your opponent will miss. I like my purple. Um, any other questions? The, the long and short of everything that I'm trying to convey is never stop expanding and always, uh, um, al always keep up the offensive. If you're raiding your opponent, um, you're damaging his economy, causing him to react, that gives you the upper hand, and always expand. You want to keep your economy growing and your production value growing. It's the only, it's the, the all around best strategy. The micro of that, there's a multitude of strategies. Do you go vehicles? Do you go bots? Do you go orbital? Oh dear. The Reaper, member of the realm, uh, is a good player, very good player, so gonna have to focus a little bit more on playing than I will on teaching. Um, but this this look oh this looks like a good starting spot. Oh yeah, this is a no-brainer starting spot. Oh dear. Okay. Hopefully he's not watching the stream. Um, if you're new to PA, another thing you'll want to do is get involved with a clan. There's a number of different clans you can get involved with. Uh, most of them are pretty friendly. Most of them have open recruiting and will be happy to teach you, play alongside you. Great learning environment. Um, if you want to find a clan, you can go to pamatches.com slash clans and get involved there. Uh, it'll have a list of clans for you to choose from. And try out. And again, I'm, I apologize for the... Uh, trailing commentary. And I really need to focus on this. I'm probably not gonna I'm probably not gonna win this. But hey, it'll be a good teaching tool, right? Long build queues are your friend. So with this long build queue, I'm gonna be able to focus on other things and not worry about energy. <sighs> okay. Um, thing about small maps is you have to be very aggressive. Uh, you don't have as much time to expand and build. Um, before the fighting starts, so this is where raiding is even more important than in larger maps like the previous one I played on. Ah, I know Duh Reaper is going to be doing lots of raiding, so I'm going to 
play a little bit more conservatively. I'm going to be getting up these defensive towers a lot sooner than I normally would. This will the the missile defense towers uh, don't cause don't cost that much metal and go up fairly quickly um, and have perfect accuracy the, since they fire homing missiles, which if Da Reaper sends a lone bots at me, which he probably will, then this will take care of them. It'll even take care of small groups of bots. Um, and then... Expand, expand, expand. Um, okay, got my docks. Let's send him out on some raiding. Let's see. I don't have my scout out yet. Okay, there's some dense metal, so he's prob lag. So he's probably gonna be over there. Then, excuse me, queue up bot factories and vehicle factories. Something that you need to be careful of is uh, on lava planets, these plateaus units will tend to get stuck on them. Beta is beta. So just play accordingly for the time being. Okay, let's see what there is to see. This is a small map, so I'm going to go straight for hummingbirds. Having the extra vision of a firefly is not as important. And there we go, I've been scouted. That was fast. Shot down by my anti-air turrets. Let's send these bots the other way around. Check out these metal spots and nothing. I'm guessing he's going to be there. Um, metal deficit, shoot. Um, this is the byproduct of me uh, playing extra cautious and building these defensive structures this early on. Generally, it's not that good of, a, of an idea. Okay, here we go. Got my first fighter out. Let's see if my hunch was correct. See if we can get in some early... Yep. This is good. Get in some early raiding. And then we'll come in from the back side. Make sure we're producing. Looks like he has expanded more. So he's probably got a stronger economy than I do. Now he is going to have to react to this. And one stay out of range of that defensive tower. Those will destroy my bots and nothing flat. I've got positive economy. Shoot. 
keep moving. So this is what you were talking about earlier with the missing. If you we get a bot strafing, then then defensive towers will miss. Ooh, get these engineers, get these engineers. Shoot! What destroyed those? Well. Okay, that was a fairly successful raid. Okay, I've got idle production. That was a bit preoccupied. Okay, work on getting some advanced out. Keep expanding, that's not good. I have an idle. I am being extremely cautious with my expansions. Probably too cautious, but it is what it is. Okay, I don't want to tank my economy for the sake of getting out advanced. Okay, let's get a nice large raid in. Always want to keep your opponent reacting to what you do rather than shoot, he probably saw those attacking bots. Laser defense tower, good thing I scouted that. Let's just go around. Act from somewhere. Don't see it. Oh shoot! Shoot! Long range. Okay, let's push into some of these unprotected metal right here. laser turret really did a, a number. Get a little bit of air combat going up. I'm gonna take out those fighters, so. Nice raid, nice raid. Now let's attack from a different side. And keep expanding, always expand. Wondering why I was having energy issues because my freaking commander got stuck. Shoot. And a big attack incoming. How big? That is a pretty decent size. Wow, that's a lot of fabricators. Good, good, good. No, shoot, I don't want to hit the, I don't want to run into the commander. Ignore the commander right now. Let's get some fabricator kills. This early on, this few bots cannot kill a commander, so there's no point in even fighting it. 
Okay, we got a big attack incoming. Let's get ready to intercept. Okay, economies. Getting back on track. Let's see if I can sneak in a pelter creep over here. Okay, let's scout again. Figure out where that large army went. Got advanced going now. Very important to kick up your economy. Because why not? Okay, this is concerning me that I don't know where that incoming army went. Probably gonna come up on the back side. Okay, nope, here we go. Coming attack. Not where I thought it would be. This is good, this is good. Destroyed it with no problem. Let's see about getting a pelter creep going. Okay, let's hurt the beep. Where's the attack? And there it is. Very nicely done from Dub Reaper. Hit my unprotected side. Let's get. For security, let's get an anti nuke up. Laser catapult. And that didn't last long. Didn't think it would. And shoot, I haven't gotten up any advanced power. That is a big problem. Okay, 
I need to kick up the attacks. Oh, shoot. This is a good fight. My fighters being scouted. Shoot, that's an incoming attack. Nope, that was a successfully defended attack. Let's get up a patrol. My economy is hurting. And that's a big incoming attack. I am being outproduced and out economied or whatever, and I know it didn't expect to win against the likes of the Reaper. That is a big attack. Big attack. Good, my laser defense tower is going to get in some shots. Helter creeps going up, but it's not going to matter since I don't have radar coverage, and he's probably going to destroy a large portion of my base. Very large portion. Let's see if I can scramble up some defenses. This is probably GG right here. It was probably GG a while ago when I couldn't get my economy going. Idle commander. Ah, Freaking. Well, he did it right. Um, I wouldn't expect anything less from something the likes of Da Reaper. Um, always expand, always raid. He did a fantastic job of keeping me on my toes and expanding my economy. He expanded faster than I did and uh, not only faster, but he did a better job defending it. But let's see how long I can hold out and how much damage I can do. Right? Kept me on my toes, kept me reacting. Nicely done. Yeah, and see, this is what I was talking about with the destroying of the economy. When you when you damage your opponent's economy, it is really, really difficult to come back from. And 
and since he's out producing me and he's got a stronger economy, I just haven't been able to mount any offenses. The offenses that I did have weren't very successful. He did a great job fending off my attacks, and here comes another one, both fending off my attacks as well as um, expanding at the same time, which is incredibly difficult to do. back my units, use my defensive tower to its full advantage. He's pulling back. I'm getting attacked from the other side, so it doesn't matter too, too much. Bots are fantastic at circumventing defenses. I didn't produce enough. So here when I'm defending, I'm going to keep... Oh, that's a big attack coming in. I'm going to keep these units behind my, my uh, structures. Let my structures soak up the damage while my units... Uh, Attack. Let's see if I can get up some wall. And here's my Pelter. Pelters are very good against large blobs of units with their area of effect damage. And even though they missed their original target, they still uh, hit another target due to the blob. Um, for some. Oh man, that bites. For some reason, my advanced my advanced uh, fabricators stopped or never built those what you call it advanced metal extractors. For some reason, that that really hurt. Which brings up a good topic, fantastic topic. Um, going advanced. It's very, okay, now that those, ah, shoot, now, um, it's very important that you build advanced um, units, you need to get that economy going, and looks like he's doing a pelter creep. Hopefully that's not a laser defense tower, and I can, nope, it's a radar. And see, this is a scouting and radar cover, it's very important. I'm able to move in and destroy this pelter creep, because I saw that coming. Okay, so advanced. Um, going advanced is a very critical move. It's important that you do step up to advanced. Um, you just don't want to do it too quickly. Um, going advanced is a big drain on your economy. Hello, positive. Why am I suddenly... Nope. Um, and there's the nuke. Charge! Uh, ooh, good topic. Repairing your commander. Um, you can use com um, units and other commanders to repair commanders, greatly increasing their effectiveness. Because, um, I mean, they, are, they take more damage.
See, uh, I would have been dead a long time ago, but since these fabricators are healing my commander, my commander's able to tank a lot more damage and cause a lot more damage. Um, and so he outproduced me big time. He, like I said, did a fantastic job getting his economy going, um, expanding his economy, proxy bases, everything that I talked about, he did it all. And all this just comes from experience. Uh, you you got to be able to keep multiple things in your head at a time. Uh, it didn't help that I was experiencing a little bit of lag. Reduces your control. Um, so you just want to expand. Expand, expand. Get stronger economy, get more production value. That's how you win. Even if somebody turtles, it allows you to... Uh, uh, having more production value allows you to overwhelm your opponent's defenses in, in one technique or another, even if it's something like slamming an asteroid or moon into a planet. Uh, well, we're at an hour and five. Um, looks like it's been mostly you, Mr. Wilson. Doesn't look like many people stuck around. Oh well, that was, that was fun. It was nice to play against a Reaper. Difficult to play and commentate at the same time, but again, it's the Reaper, the Realm, good players, very good players. Um, and yes, I'm making excuses to make up for my lack of skill playing against one of the most skilled players in the Realm. Or Planetary Annihilation for that matter. So, um, I don't know, I think I was able to cover a lot. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you were able to learn something. Uh, check out pamatches.com for more tutorials.